Welcome, everybody. Sorry we're running a little bit late, um, but obviously all the sessions have been knocked on from this morning, so uh, hopefully we'll keep this nice and, uh, and brief and within the time frame that we, we have planned. Um, but having said that, we've got some interesting things, I think, uh, to, to talk about and, and to hear uh, a very interesting story coming from pret around their uh, IPOS procurement implementation. So uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Andrew Parsons from Professional Vantage. We're the developers of uh, IPOS, which is a uh, Sun Systems specific procurement solution. And um, we're an Australian company. We've been around for many, many years now, probably about 30 years, almost as long as Touchstone themselves. And we specialize in both Sun Systems, but also producing extra tools and modules that sit in and around the outside of the Sun Systems experience to give you extra functionality, uh, a different user interface, or, or just to extend on what you can do within Sun. But at the same time, we try to keep that very specific to the Sun Systems world, and all of our modules are integrated with Sun at the very deepest level uh, through the database, so that you have an absolute surety that there's always a, an upgrade path to take you forward through new versions of Sun Systems, uh, and, and to provide the functionality, and to leave it off the Sun Systems functionality that you may have. So you'll find professional Vantage modules delivered through Touchstone to their clients uh, as quite a broad penetration of the client base and addressing many different areas. So um, one of the other good things about this is that we're a very important and long-term development partner with Infor around Sun Systems. So we are aware of what they're doing. And as you'll see as I talk about some of the roadmap things going forward for IPOS and for other modules, uh, we're very much trying to, to move in the same directions as uh, Infor themselves in terms of the workspace, in terms of the social collaboration, et cetera. So uh, it's something that we're very passionate about and uh, continuing to improve that Sun Systems experience. So what I was thinking, um, just to explain a little about our product suite, we obviously deal in a number of different areas, and I'm sort of making a broad assumption that the people in this room are probably uh, aware of IPOS, at least. But uh, we do have uh, different tools that sit in different uh, areas, and all of these are passed on to the clients uh, by Touchstone. Um, the cash desk suite up in the top left-hand corner there gives you uh, banking capability, transfer of funds to your bank after payments, etc. Uh, generation of remittances uh, in and around Sun Systems payments, and of course, uh, the functionality to actually provide um, debtor management with Collect, which is also uh, a tool that Professional Vantage provide. But most importantly for this session, up in the top right-hand corner, uh, we have IPOS. And IPOS is a web-based procurement tool um, that allows you to completely control your spend, um, starting from the very early stages of a requisition, request for expenditure, through to the invoice registration and the postings of any invoices into Sun Systems. So um, the IPOS environment allows you to generate purchase orders, uh, approve all of those requests in the correct matrix fashion that you may have, and provide all of the standard uh, procurement functionality that you may need around goods receipting, um, supplier control, item control, pricing control, all of these sort of things. So it's certainly a very uh, complete solution for procurement in this space, and it has a number of an additional modules uh, that allow you to have analytical capability, web and mobile phone-based approval capability, uh, and other things such as this. So this is um, a tool that very much is uh, becoming more and more popular in the Sun System space. It's uh, the most widely used procurement module for Sun Systems uh, across uh, Sun Systems clients globally. Um, so it is one of those tools that uh, most people are finding quite useful. And if you look at the path going forward for IPOS, what we're trying to do is obviously keep up with the platform support offered by Infor around Windows, around SQL environments, but also around the web-based environments. Um, IPOS is currently available for all of the Infor 10 environments and platforms uh, supported by Infor themselves. And it is also moving forward in due course around the web space deployment, the context-specific deployment, and the ION bus, which you've been hearing a lot about this morning. So certainly anyone who's already using IPOS would be able to benefit uh, from the IPOS functionality within that new environment as you move forward with Info. Um, and going forward, we should be in a position whereby by mid-2013, um, the IPOS procurement module 
will be within the context-specific functionality uh, of the workspace and deployed through SharePoint in the same way as all the other tools that you've been looking at. So just looking at IPOS, it is uh, a tool which is quite extensively used. And some of the new functionality that's creeping into uh, the 5.7 version, which is the current lease of IPOS, for those of you who already have it or are looking at IPOS, um, is the dashboard. PA dashboard is a tool that delivers through the web uh, a set of KPI-based reports, graphical reports with drill down or grid-based reports with various listing capability and export capability. And this is giving management users uh, a top-level view of their spend, of the activity within their procurement system, um, how they're dealing with their suppliers, how they're dealing with their pricing, things like this. So this is a module that's now available for the current releases of IPOS and will be improved as we go forward with the new releases in the coming year. We've also recently brought in the smartphone approval capability, and this is something which uh, can actually be deployed to anyone who already has IPOS 5.7, which is the release that's been out for the last year or so. Uh, and it's actually uh, a module that is uh, available as part of core, so you don't have to upgrade to IPOS 5.8 to, to move forward or anything like this. You can actually take it and just deploy it immediately for anyone who's interested. And this gives uh, approvers the capability on their phones to follow email links link directly back into an approval area which will give them full details of requisitions and invoices they wish to approve with drill down capability down to the bottom level of that detail and then make the uh, decisions as required. So this is something that uh, a lot of clients are now looking at and deploying successfully to give those people who are approvers but on the road uh, more capability and it links very closely in with uh, this mobile capability that you've been hearing Rory talking about in the last session and, and this morning. Mobile is becoming more and more important, and certainly uh, that, that's also true with procurement systems and, and IPOS. This is actually available for all platforms of uh, mobile device currently, so you can work it with Android, you can work it with iOS, you can work it with Windows uh, environments, so it's actually a very uh, broadly supported tool uh, already. The other thing we're looking at currently and is available currently, again, as part of the core module for anyone who already has IPOS, is the desktop notification tool. Um, there's been a lot of feedback over the course of the last year uh, where people don't necessarily want to have uh, email alerts coming in. Um, they also don't necessarily want to sit in the browser screen for to-do lists all the time. So we've actually uh, introduced a desktop alert capability whereby it can have a pop-up at the bottom of the screen, similar to an Outlook pop-up that just says you've got something to approve, they can go and click a button and it will show you the approval and allow you uh, to approve that or reject it, of course, if, if you wanted to. So these are just a couple of extra capabilities that we're bringing in uh, to IPOS currently and I'll be talking in a little while about some things we've got coming forward. So uh, if we look at uh, IPOS as a whole, um, we've got a very interesting case study here with us today. Uh, it is from pret i I'm going to introduce Ben Patricks, who's uh, the financial systems controller at Pret. Pret have been using IPOS for a number of years now and uh, has recently gone through a little bit of an expansion as the business has expanded. And uh, I think I'm happy to say that initially um, it, it was a, a process where we actually had to put a lot of work in to get it to, to work for them in the correct way. But uh, the system is flexible and uh, we're now very happy that uh, Pret have been able to benefit from those uh, things that we've done and give them a solution that really does help them in a, in a very important fashion in their global expansion. So uh, I'd like to introduce Ben Patricks and he's going to talk to you for uh, 15 or 20 minutes about the Pret experience and uh, how IPOS is benefiting them. So thank you very much, Ben. Thanks very much, Andrew. Uh, yeah, so hopefully everyone in the room is familiar with pret a uh, In London we have a, a very strong presence. I uh, have about 260 shops in the UK, which uh, is, is focused mainly around, around London, but we go down as far as, uh, as Canterbury and, and Brighton, across to sort of uh, Bristol and, and Cardiff, uh, all the way up to Aberdeen uh, as one of our, our newest areas, uh, and has been, been very, very successful. But also globally, uh, as, as a brand, we uh, have offices in, in Hong Kong. Uh, we also have a, a very rapidly expanding business in, in the US and are looking for opportunities in, in other places in Asia and in Europe as well. So thinking then a bit about what it is that we have as a, as a requirement, we have quite a, uh, an intense uh, load when it comes to uh, uh, ordering. 
So purchasing is something that is always at the forefront of our mind. We do have an internal system that takes care of our food ordering with uh, our two main suppliers, but any other purchasing that we do as a company, we do that through IPOS. Uh, when we were looking for a purchasing system, we were looking for something that was very, very flexible, was going to be able to take care of a lot of that sort of back-end noise for us and, and adapt to the sort of size of business that we were and the expanding business that we were. So at the moment, we were looking at about 40 different cost centres uh, that, were, that were split. Um, the main functions that we have in most businesses, such as marketing, uh, sort of the, our food team, which is very, very prevalent when it comes to uh, creating the delicious things that you buy in the shops every day. Uh, the finance team, HR teams, all of these people had different requirements when it came to uh, a purchasing system. So obviously we have lots of different approvers in there that all had a very strong interest in making sure that they had control over their budgets, making sure that the spend was, was, uh, was done appropriately, and making sure that um, as, as a business we were able to, to purchase things that uh, we needed on a day-to-day -day basis just to make things actually happen. So I suppose thinking first about the key benefits, whenever I talk to the uh, finance director of the company, the, the main thing that he wants out of a purchasing system is to make sure that the accounting is correct. Uh, when it comes to accrual accounting, IPOS, uh, in my opinion, is far and away the best solution on the market. When it comes to uh, raising requisitions and, and building those into, uh, into purchase orders, uh, the way that IPOS connects through directly into Sun, uh, and is able to record uh, the accruals and commitments uh, is, is very, very clear, is, is easy to follow, and we've never had any problem with being able to go back and reconcile to that. So that's something that fills us with a lot of confidence. Also, from a budgeting point of view, obviously IPOS is able to link through with the budgets that are loaded into Sun, and we can go through it and very quickly, as people are making those business decisions about, right, do I have the budget available to spend against this particular cost centre? Uh, they can very quickly say yes or no. Uh, it will come up nice and uh, nice and clear as day in in red if the if that's not the case and they can't spend the money. So you know, there's there's no arguing. And uh, and if people do want to try and uh, put one over their boss, then they have a pretty hard time doing it. The other thing that we also think about on a uh, a level of how effective it is and how efficient in a purchasing system is the three-way matching techniques that we use. So IPOS has the ability to go through, look at a, a requisition and purchase order, uh, await a goods receipt that comes through, uh, and then follow that all the way through to the, uh, the invoicing uh, stage so that if everything matches right from that very first approval, nothing more needs to be done. Uh, and if, if there is actually a change in the values of the invoices, then obviously we do need to go back and get that reapproval, and, and that's fine. But IPOS deals with that in a, in a very efficient uh, manner. It's very clear to people why they're receiving something for approval. It, it's not a surprise to them. Uh, and that's something that, that we're always looking for. When it comes to the, uh, the way to, to deal with workflow, this is one of IPOS's key strengths, I, I believe, uh, is the flexibility of the approval matrix in the back end. <laughs> So I'm sure everyone in the room who's ever had to go through a sort of a, um, a procurement sort of policy and, and a review process, people will say, oh, uh, you know, I definitely don't need to uh, have any sort of specific control over this particular area. It's all very generic. We'll go through and, and this person will approve this and this person will approve this, no problem at all, until the week after when they decide, actually, no, that's not the case. And this, this person over here will have uh, the ability to approve over this specific code, and so it has to go back and change it all over again. Well, IPOS can do that and have that flexible approach to approval, and, and there's no problems with that. Uh, we have, at the moment, about 900 different approval streams that we have defined uh, within our approval process. Uh, in a perfect world, it would be less than that, but the reality is that people want specific control over specific codes, uh, and IPOS has the ability to deliver that, which is great. And the other thing that Andrew has alluded to before is about Sun Systems integration. We have a, a database that has the professional advantage products sitting directly uh, with the Sun products. So when it comes to moving the information between them, there's no complex ETL that goes along with that. It's, it's not a, a separate integration suite. It is sitting on the same database. It talks seamlessly. Uh, and everything that needs to be updated from uh, allocation markers in Sun uh, to uh, customer accounts that, and supplier accounts. They're all updated instantly, so, so that's a great thing. I think 
Andrew mentioned before about iPods and about why it's not just a standard uh, archaic sort of purchasing system. It is moving with the times, and I think that's something that, as Pret, as a company, we're very uh, you know, quick to uh, quick to change and agile in our approach to most things. And purchasing, it's the same thing realistically. So when there were new products that were coming out, uh, such as mobile approvals or, or notifications, uh, we looked to see if there was a, a business need. Um, that was that was lacking, and these products could uh, could fill a gap. So, with the mobile approval suite, uh, we've recently rolled this out to uh, to be able to be accessed by our ops managers, because we did find that uh, operations managers who are on the road constantly, if they could get away with uh, any excuse for not approving invoices, then then they would. Um, and it tended to be, oh, we're only in the office once a week, so we'll only approve once a week, uh, was sort of the standard response. And because we had a secure a lockdown server, uh, then yes, they could only access it internally. Whereas now, with the mobile approvals, uh, every ops manager at Pret has an iPad, uh, and even though they're on the move and out and about, they're able to log directly in, see all their invoices for approval, and, and approve them on the spot. And we are seeing a, a massive improvement in the approval times uh, um, since we've actually put that in. The other thing Andrew mentioned before was with the pop-up notifications. Uh, I think everyone will be able to sort of uh, relate to the fact that if people need to log into a separate system to be able to do some sort of basic f f uh, system uh, process, they, they probably won't do it unless they absolutely definitely have to. Uh, this uh, pop-up notifications is just a little thing in system tray popping up telling people, right, you have something to do right now, get in and do it. And if you put something in a nice simple way in front of people's faces, you'll find that they actually will do it more often than not. We're getting very positive feedback since we've implemented this just over a month ago. Also, we have the, the scheduling aspect within iPods, which, which is great. So the ability to define escalations. If you have, have you ever been in the situation where uh, somebody has gone away on holidays or somebody has been particularly tardy in, in approving, uh, then iPods has the ability to go through, find where someone has not been able to approve in a timely fashion, escalate something through, and, and push it on, which is uh, which is great. Also, now we have the ability to uh, to manually e to either manually generate POs or to send them out automatically, which is you know something that, in my mind, every every system should have, and, and iPods does and deals with in a, in a seamless way. The other thing that we're able to do is go through and do uh, more validation. Uh, so there's the the journal entry thin function JET, uh, which is able to define uh, where we have to put any controls in place, such as our, our CAPEX codes. Uh, so if you only want a particular code to be stored um, for any sort of project that we're doing, then you're able to validate that within JET, ensure that at the, uh, at the iPods level, before people go in and actually load things, they're told, no, you've, you've got the wrong code, go back and, uh, and start again. So that sort of flexibility in the system is something that we're always looking for at Pratt and something that iPods provides for us. So I suppose thinking then about what it is that, uh, that we're doing now, uh, we're always looking to the future and how we can actually utilise the product in a better fashion. So the way that we're thinking about doing that is with a new help desk system that we have in place. And we're looking at using the XML import functionality within iPods to be able to export things directly from our help desk system for maintenance requests. Because at the moment we have a help desk system where we go through log our maintenance requests manually and then somebody else rekeys those into uh, the iPods system to be able to order the goods from the uh, maintenance suppliers. iPods does have the ability to take an XML import from that help desk system and with key fields automatically generate the requisition and push it off for approval. So that will uh, automatically cut down on all of that rekeying there, and, and it's something that we're very keen to look at, uh, especially as we move forward with iPods. We're also very keen, and I think I might be jumping the gun a little bit here, Andrew, so sorry, um, at some of the functionality with contract management, which is uh, in future releases of, of iPods, and the way to be able to have a, a central point uh, to, to manage all of our contracts and then drag down uh, any sort of purchasing that's required as a part of that. So as we grow as a business, having that central repository to be able to pull things down into an automatically generated requisition uh, and build that straight away if it's within the certain constraints, or at least make people aware of the constraints as they're going through and purchasing, it seems like something that's really powerful in, in uh, our expansion. And realistically for Pret, one of the messages that we got across before was our, our expansion is, is very, very rapid. Uh, we've been able to expand now in the US into uh, Chicago and Boston in the last year, 
Uh, we've only opened in Paris uh, this year um, in January, and we now have four shops, and they're expanding at a, at a rate of knots. So we're looking now as to where, where we can use iPods to uh, be able to expand into those new markets uh, and try and tap into the functionality that exists within iPods for multi-currency uh, and the link that that has back into Sun. And so at, at the moment we don't do that, but it's certainly an opportunity for us because uh, iPods has that functionality and it's something that we're keen to explore. So I suppose thinking about how we use iPods, it makes it sound like it's some sort of uh, you know, perfect world and that there's never any, uh, never any problems or there's never any, uh, any development that needs to be done, but that's of course not the case. Uh, it's, it's a very, very dynamic system and, and Sun is a dynamic system as well, um, and so they move together. And so we have support through Touchstone to be able to help us whenever we have any issues with, uh, uh, with iPods. Uh, they're very, uh, very much up to speed and we have uh, a great relationship with them over time now about being able to fix problems in a timely fashion. Or if we can't get them fixed, uh, then uh, to be able to escalate those to professional advantage. Uh, and the few occasions I think where we have had to get professional advantage involved, uh, there's been, it's never been a problem either to get someone locally here in the UK or a few times to uh, have a nice early morning phone call to Sydney, um, which, which can be fun, to try and figure out what's going on and, and get a solution uh, on the spot, which is something we're really keen on doing because you don't want to be hanging around when you've got the entire company's purchasing system uh, waiting on a fix. So, so far we really have had a, uh, a, a relationship of, of constant improvement uh, with iPods. Uh, we're a customer from a, from a long while back now, back in 2005, I believe it was, that we moved to, well, maybe not quite, I think that was Sun 2006, yeah, um, moved across. Uh, and it, it has been a stage of going through and developing iPods um, with PA over time. Uh, and now with our relationship with, touch, with Touchstone as well, we feel like we are at a place now where our purchasing system is able to support us in, a, in our, uh, our growth and uh, able to evolve with us and be responsive to our business needs. So something that I'm, as a systems manager, the person responsible for it, very, very happy about. So just as one little note, um, I know that uh, there were some love bars that were floating around before. That's just some shameless cross promotion. So please feel free to grab, uh, grab some of the love bars that are around. Uh, this is part and parcel of, uh, of what we do as part of PRET. Uh, we're very much focused on um, giving back to the, the community as well. Uh, each love bar that we have uh, was purchased there today has a small donation that goes to homeless charities as well. So you can eat it and feel like you're doing something good as well. So, okay, can I ask you a question? Um, with the office implementation, did you find that uh, cultural change from a procurement sense was a, a large issue within the organisation? And, and did you find any of the elements of iPods from a sort of a simplicity sense either helped or, or didn't help with, with any of that sort of uh, side of things? No, certainly, Andrew. I think the um, the big thing when it comes to any sort of implementation is not just thinking about the system, but also the the prevailing culture at the time. Um, certainly, uh, when it comes to trying to get people to uh, go through and and receipt and uh, and and go through and push that through to invoicing, it's always uh, it's always a pain to try and uh, enforce that upon people. Uh, the great thing that uh, the great feedback I have about iPods is uh, because it is. Um, you get the notifications, they're, they're there all the time. Uh, it's very clear at any point who the person who that document is going to um, is. Uh, that at very least people are able to have that sort of visibility using iPods as to how their, you know, the procurement cycle is, is, is moving forward. Yeah, so they're actually able to see at any point in time. So, and they're also the, the inquiry aspect within iPods allows people to get that sort of that visibility. I think in any sort of uh, procurement implementation, it, you're sort of always asking people to do something extra than, than what they have. So if you can, in that way, at least provide them with the, uh, the information that they need to have the visibility of way, where what they're doing is going, um, then, then you're one step ahead of the game, really. So. And, and from an uh, administration sense, do you find that uh, the, the process of actually changing things in iPods, when you change something in Sun, is that something that uh, takes a lot of time or, or is it relatively easy from your perspective as a, as a financial person? Yeah, so when it comes to the administration side of things, certainly there's, uh, there, there's a few key aspects. Um, one is the, the integration we were talking about before with Sun. 
Uh, so we do have the updates within Sun that automatically flow through in, into IPOS to do with their cost centres and, and suppliers. And, and so there's no rekeying from that aspect, which is a great thing. Um, I think I sort of alluded to before when it comes to the approval matrices, the thing that's always interesting is in, in a perfect world, it would be nice and simple if your, uh, if your organisational structure was a nice linear sort of approach and things are in place. Um, so if you had a a very simple organisational structure, then that would be made much simpler. When I talk about the sort of 900 odd rows that we have, it, it's not really a case of um, that being anything sort of systems based. That's obviously because there's a cultural need to have that sort of level of, of detail um, driven by the business, exactly right. So the, the thing that is great about that though at least is that we can, we do have the ability to do that uh, and to get it down to that level of detail. Um, we're not sort of restricted to say you can only approve in a single hierarchy within a department. We have the ability to say, well, within this, de within this department, for this project code, by this supplier, for this account, it goes down this specific approval path because that's a business requirement. Um, and so certainly it's easy enough, but uh, any of the needs to make it more complex um, that were business driven have been able to be implemented. So. But, but you would say for you the approval matrix is the most Yes, it, it is, and certainly that's that's probably the, the hardest part of the, the whole thing. And, and sort of backing onto that, would you say, uh, are, are there any challenges that you had? If you were implementing uh, a procurement system, I was particularly obviously from, from scratch, is there any tips you would sort of think of in terms of recommendations as to an approach or any challenges you particularly had? I think the uh, the, the challenges that we have um, on, a, on a daily basis are always uh, are around the processes in, in getting people to go through and, and do the right thing at any point in time and sort of realise that if it's done in the, in the right way, uh, then it actually is saving a lot of time. So if you already uh, have a process in place where uh, there is a, a requisitioning slash purchasing stage, um, a receipting stage and, and an invoicing uh, component, um, then that, that is you know, already uh, well and truly ahead of the game. Um, but certainly trying to get that mentality to people to say, right, it is important to go through and, and receipt only the right amount of, of goods. Um, it, is, it is important to uh, make sure that you don't just raise a purchase order for a, a, a nominal amount just so you can send an order out, that to actually go through and get a quote and have it correct. Um, those sorts of things are, are very important in my mind before uh, thinking about, you know, the system is not going to stop people from doing that. Um, so getting that education process in part first is, is very important. Exactly, exactly. So the, the, the purchasing process is there. The system itself is there to support the process. The process is not... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly right. Why when there's a difference between what you've ordered and what you've actually purchased? So that's, that's fine. So where we uh, were talking before about the, uh, the matrix, you can go through and have that three-way matching where it will... It will <coughs> take the uh, original order and the receipt and, and the invoice and see if those all match. And if they don't match, then there's a, a set tolerance within IPOS to say, under this tolerance, we accept that that's OK and it won't require a reapproval. Um, but if at the invoice stage it actually has exceeded the tolerance that you've preset, then it will send it back through the approval process again to, to be reapproved. Uh, so uh, does, the, does the original order amount get posted during the ledger? And then the other, the other, when it goes through, does it get overwritten? Yeah, so the, the actual order amount will go through as, as a commitment within the, uh, within the system. Um, and then as it is receipted, the commitment is reversed out and uh, replaced by an accrual for the, uh, for the, by the receipt. Um, and then as the invoice comes through, the, uh, the actual accrual from the receipt is reversed out and the actual um, purchase invoice actual hits the ledger at that point. So it is a step-by-step -step process to say, at this point, we, uh, we have a, a commitment. The commitment is replaced then by uh, an accrual as the receipting is done, which is then replaced by the actual expense once the uh, once the invoice is paid. And, and just to add to that, it, with, the, uh, with the goods receipt, if you did a partial goods receipt, if something wasn't going to arrive, or, or maybe it was more or less, then the actual goods receipt is not Right. Thank you very much, Ben. Cheers. Just a speech. All right, so, um, so
So as you can see, it, you know, IPOS is a flexible solution. It's a tool that uh, certainly can bring a flexibility to your procurement, but also that diligence that you need in terms of actually making a process available to everybody, something that has to be done, but also being flexible where needed. And I'd like to reiterate, the, the key is the integration to Sun Systems, in that you could implement a number of different procurement systems against Sun Systems. However, none of them work in the same way as IPOS in terms of the fact that IPOS writes everything directly to Sun Systems. There's no interfacing, as Ben alluded to, in terms of an API or an EDI or anything like that, which means that you don't have these reconciliation issues. You don't have a situation where uh, transactions can occur in the procurement system, hit an interface, and then stop at the interface due to some uh, validation error, due to some data uh, mapping error and then you don't know necessarily what's happening. With IPOS, if there is something like that, it will come back and actually tell you at the very front screen because you don't have this sort of uh, interfacing in the middle. It is a real-time database level drive, and that's an absolute uh, benefit in terms of ensuring it's easy to administer and, and less issues reported going forwards from a maintenance point of view. So just looking forward with IPOS, I'd like to just uh, tell you about some things we have coming in the, in the coming year. Um, IPOS has a cycle of development, obviously, and uh, the next release coming along uh, in March in 2013 is IPOS 5.8, and 5.8 introduces a number of features. The first and key one is, as Ben again mentioned, just jumping ahead slightly, but that's cool, um, is the contract management feature, and this will be uh, a part of the module that will allow you to set up a contract for a supplier for items or for a value, or indeed for items with a value rather than for a supplier, and have the system alert you when that contract is due for renewal, when it's hitting uh, critical levels in terms of what's been drawn down from it, that sort of thing, and associate any documents uh, to that and give you a contract manager type uh, situation. So once you've set that up, you're then able to automatically have the system draw down any requisitions and purchase orders from that contract and associate the goods receipting against the contract, etc. So that's a, a key piece of functionality. Uh, coming into 5.8, it's available as part of a core upgrade. So if you were to just move to the new version, you would immediately have access uh, to the contract management solution. And that also deals with the generation and approval of the contract and the posting of a contract budget that you can then draw down from uh, as you go through the requisitioning cycle. So that's one part of the, the new release. The other thing coming into 5.8 is credit card management. We have a, a, an element in there that will allow you to import credit card statements, allocate them off to various users through the approval processes, and then have them posted on uh, into Sun Systems automatically. And this is not a separate module. It is actually part, again, of the core solution. So anyone upgrading to 5.8 can immediately benefit from that without any license extensions, et cetera. They just need to implement uh, the, the functionality w within IPOS. So that's sort of things coming into 5.8. Apart from a change to the look and feel, um, an improved look and feel, we feel, <laughs> and, uh, and some just UI changes which people have been asking for in various ways around email management, uh, the ability to add extra attachments to outgoing uh, communications with suppliers and things like this. So there's a whole roadmap around those smaller changes within 5.8 which would be available from us or from Touchstone as, as needed. Um, going off into uh, further into 2013, we have IPOS 5.9 on the cards, and I know that seems to be quite a quick release, um, but that's because we had a little bit of functionality we wanted to bring in that we didn't get into 5.8, unfortunately, and that's uh, an improved invoice management module which will allow you to uh, deal with invoices in a very nice new UI, which uh, you'll see in 5.9 coming along. So that's an incremental improvement on what you're seeing in 5.8. And that invoice management tool also perhaps will have a Windows-based element for those people who don't want to work uh, within the web or, or are only typing fast in terms of putting things into the invoices. So there are those sort of things that are small improvements. Then finally, going into sort of mid to the back end of this coming year, um, we are looking at the full uh, integration towards uh, ION and the, uh, the Info workspace, which will mean that you can actually bring uh, processes from IPOS in terms of approval into that UI. You could also have context-specific uh, reporting and action alerts coming through into the web UI. So this is part of our ongoing process of keeping up to date with, uh, 
with Infor and, and obviously reinforcing our integration to Sun Systems. So those are sort of the things you've got coming along in the coming year. Um, Obviously, the current release supports Info 10. It supports the dashboard, the notifications, and the mobile approvals, which Ben has uh, talked about. So can I just ask, who, who in the room currently has IPOS? And Right, so if, if sort of about 40% sort of, of you have, have IPOS already. So anyone who's on 5.7 could immediately implement any of these uh, tools, the dashboard, the mobile approvals, et cetera. And anyone who took it could obviously uh, implement them immediately. Moving into the next release, 5.8, it's in March in the coming year. Uh, it's got a new look and feel, the contract module, and also will allow an express requisition import. I've got to mention that, uh, just as well I have a slide. Um, and this is a tool which we're calling Rec Express, which will allow you to import requisitions directly into IPOS from a spreadsheet. So this is to address uh, a need which we've seen in some of our clients where they have very large requisitions that they need to set up regularly and they don't want to, to uh, necessarily have to type them in or use a template in the system. So they prefer to manage them on the spreadsheet, bring in a load of requisitions in one go, and that's something that, that we can support in 5.8 as well. Um, and then moving on, 5.9, probably mid to late next year, uh, and introduces the advanced invoice management uh, and things like that. So just a quick taster. This is uh, a screenshot of 5.8. Um, some of the changes to look and feel, those of you who already have IPOS will see that this is slightly different to what you currently have. You don't have to take the new look and feel. If you take 5.8, you can actually stay with the current look and feel of IPOS if, if needed. And uh, if you wanted to take the new version, the key benefits are that down the left-hand side, you can see that we now have uh, a different menu structure that you can access from anywhere in the system. So rather than having to go into, say, the requisition portal, the purchasing portal to do things within there, you can actually, from wherever you are in the screen, jump into a different part of the portal by using the menu on the left, or indeed, use the menu along the top to jump into any of those areas as well. So it's a crisper look and feel. It's a, it's a more um, intuitive look and feel in terms of surfacing information from wherever you are. For an example, you can change Sun Systems business unit from any screen within the system, which obviously is, is a benefit of your multi-entity. So that's just a, an example of the new look and feel. Again, this is a contract management screen. You can see Looks, looks significantly different to what you would see in uh, your current version of IPOS. And this is just an example of a screen where you can set up a contract with a contract number, any variations required, uh, contract manager and approvals and things like this. So um, it, is, uh, it is slightly different and it is there if you wanted to benefit from it going forward. The last part is the dashboard. Um, can I ask, has anyone got dashboard here? No? Well, okay, so this is new, new to most people. Dashboard is, uh, is uh, available with about 15 standard reports that are in and around the IPOS procurement data. So just by installing Dashboard, you immediately can benefit from those reports. It covers most of the normal uh, type questions you would expect to get from a KPI tool. So it is really a BI tool in terms of the way it works. So this could be a view on the world that any user group could access. In effect, when I log in, I would see the dashboard elements that I want to see. So a different person could have a different dashboard. And each of these is an individual report. So we can deploy and design as many of these reports as you needed. And if you were to hit the little drop down at the top in each report, you would get a set of parameters you can fill in around business units, cost centers, analysis, and all of those sort of things. So this is something that most people would implement initially with the standard reports, and then maybe over time start to say, well, we'd actually like a graph that shows spend against budget by department for a certain number of periods, or whatever it is that you need from a, a KPI sense. And we could then deploy that report, and the users that need it could start benefiting from it. So it's certainly an independent view on the world for each user group. Uh, it's also a very uh, good uh, system in terms of being a concurrent user base. So uh, anyone who had a number of people who needed it, but perhaps other people, you don't have to go down the IPOS named user licensing type. Uh, approach, you can have a concurrent user for it. So it's something that a lot of people are now uh, taking up, and it's a very obvious addition to the IPOS reporting functionality. Um, so that really draws me to a close. Thank you for your time. Um, again, I'd like to reinforce, obviously, uh, anyone who's on social, please do feel free to tweet. I've been tweeting this morning. Uh, and I'd like to thank you very much for your time. If you are interested in any uh, further discussion about IPOS or have any questions of Ben or myself, um, obviously, please do come and 
have a talk to us on the PA stand outside. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think there's now a small break for the next session. So thank you.